Hi there, David here, and today I wanna to share with you some enhancer plugins that I use whenever I'm designing sound effects. So these plugins are not plugins that I use to drastically change a sound like a pitch shifter might do, uh, but they're just gonna add some subtle details. Sometimes it's gonna be some high-end clarity, sometimes it's gonna be making a sound feel closer to you, sometimes it's gonna be adding punch. So if you ever feel like your, your sounds sound kind of bland or you're not sure how to make them feel a little bit better or have more clarity, then this is gonna be the video for you. So why don't we just jump right into our session here. I already have some examples picked out. And so let's have a listen to what these plugins are and what they can do. All right, here we are inside of Reaper. So let's go one by one through each of these. These are in no particular order. So here we go. So the first one I had picked out here is Uber Loud. And I'll just say, uh, just actually before we start is I'm not gonna go in depth in each of these plugins and what they can do. I'm just gonna show you how I use them uh, just, to, just to add some enhancement to my sounds here, okay? so. Um, the first way that I like to use it is in this single band mode, and I'll do that just to make sounds louder as the plugin suggests it can do. So here I have one example. So let's just turn off the plugin here and let's have a listen to it here. So this is a sound from my uh, recent sound pack that I released, just like a gadget, gadgety sound. Right, so it's cool. Uh, now, if I wanna make it louder, it's super easy to do with this. Of course you could use a gain, but this kind of compresses it as well. And I think there's also some like distortion or maximizer in there. I'm not too sure what the algorithm is, but anyways, it sounds good. So let's have a listen. Right, so with that, you get a, a sound that's a lot louder and also feels a lot closer to you. So if I turn it off, right, so that sounds okay, but now with this. Right, you get some sort of like multiband compression or some, something like that happening in here. So it sounds really good. So that, that's the first way I like to use it. It's just to make sounds louder. Sometimes if I'm recording stuff raw, eh, I can just throw this on and it'll just sound better just right away. The second way that I like to use it is in the multiband mode here. Normally I'll do three band. I rarely do two band. Um, yeah, I, I normally like to do three band. And the reason for that is because you have this low uh, push. And I always like, well, always, I often find myself going here to, to push out the lows in a, in a sound. So let's have a listen to this sound here. So we have an idea of what it's doing. All right, so that is a steampunk factory machine sound. And let's just turn on the plugin. And for this sound, I actually, um, I put on some of this high push here. And you'll notice here that I've assigned it to the Reaper parameter modulation. And so I assigned it to uh, the incoming signal, so one and two. So basically it's working as an envelope follower. So it's gonna go up and down as the volume and amplitude goes up and down. So if we have a look here. Right, so it feels like it's a lot closer to you. There's a lot more high end detail. Let's turn it off. Right, it's fine. It's a lot more bassy, but with this. Right, you get more of that high end clarity to the sound. So that's cool. Let's say I wanted to turn that off. I could turn that off. Another way that I find myself using this plugin here is with the lows. So I might push out the lows a lot. Probably won't work very well for this sound, but. Right, you can get a lot of that low rumble. And if ever I want to push the mids, because the mids are for some reason like not, not present, you can do that. Right, but the point is that I can easily like push out whatever frequency band and, and just make it a lot more present with this plugin. And it's just super easy to do. Uh, so yeah, that, that's how I like to use this Uberloud plugin. All right, let's go to our next sound here. And this one you probably already own if you've been doing sound design for quite a while and it is OTT. So OTT is a free multiband compressor and I use it, it's kind of similar to Uberloud, but it's different because I, I like to use it a lot more subtly. So let's have a listen to this sound here that I have. This is a factory machine sound that I created. So let's have a listen. So again, this is a, a part of my steampunk pack and let's just turn on OTT and I'll just show you kind of like my default settings that I like to use it as. So I normally like to put the upward and downward compression all the way down. Just This is just for me as a, as a starting position. That's where I like to have it. After that, I'll put the depth at around like 50 and then I'll play with the depth just to see um, what, how, it, how it's affecting the sound. So if we play it now. Right, so to my ears, what it's doing is it's kind of balancing out the frequencies, and that's how I like to use uh, this plugin for. It's more uh, to level out all the frequencies so they're kind of all at the same level, so there's no one frequency that's louder than the other. They're kind of all the same. So if ever, like, if I turn this plugin off, I find the, the, the highs are not as present. 
Especially for this, like, lower section. Right, but as soon as I turn it on, suddenly the higher frequencies are a lot more present. Now, it's hard to hear exactly what it's doing. You kind of have to balance out the out. But it just feels a bit more present and a bit fuller, right? So that's how I use it. it. It's not so much to add some harshness or anything. It's just to balance out all the frequencies so it sounds a little bit better, a little bit more present as well. All right, so with these two examples, they're more like multiband compressors. Um, they kind of make your sound feel a lot more balanced and just fuller. So that's an, it, those are easy ways to just add those kinds of effects. And that, those are the two plugins I normally go to to do that. All right, let's go to our third example here, our third plugin. And this one is Subth Synth. And this is by uh, Plugin Alliance, a, a plugin by Plugin Alliance. And basically, as it's as the name says, it adds some subharmonics to a sound. So normally, I like to add this to some sort of like impact sounds or like um, uh, transient heavy sounds. Uh, it's just really good for that because if you have like longer ambiences, it kind of it'll add like rumble to the sound. And sometimes that's what you want, and sometimes I'll, I'll do that. But in general, I add it to some sort of transient sound. So let's have a listen to the uh, first sound that I have here. This is a weapon shot that I have from my sound pack. It sounds like this. It's like a steampunk weapon. And then let's just turn it on. And what I like to do is to just put up the sub harmonics here. I normally go to 100% and then I'll turn up 56 to 80. That's just kind of my go-to. And then I'll kind of see what that sounds like. Right, right away, you can just feel the sub and it just feels a lot bigger and heavier. It just sounds good. Now I might play with these uh, lower two knobs down here, but normally I don't touch them very much. Like to me, they sound kind of too muddy. Could also be that just my speakers don't reproduce those frequencies very well. So maybe that's why I tend to just stick with this one here. But uh, yeah, so this is it. Like I, I try to keep it kind of subtle. I might even dial it back a bit. Right, so it just adds weight and 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 largeness to the sound. And I have another example here. This again, another another shot here, I think. And with it on. Right, so it's just an easy way to quickly add weight to a, 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 a sound. Now, the thing about this one is that you do need to have some lower frequencies present in the sound so that it actually works and, and it adds those harmonics. But if you do, then it's really great for that. All right, so our next enhancer plugin are transient shapers. And for these, there's two that I like that are kind of like my go-tos. The first one is uh, the transient shaper from Kilohertz. And this is just great for adding attack and actually just shaping the envelope of the sound. So here I have like this little clock sound in my sound pack. Okay, I can easily add attack and make it snappier. I can also like reduce the sustain here. Now it's not as apparent in this sound because there's not much sustain anyways, but it's really great for shaping that if I wanted to. All right, so this is kind of like my favorite one to go to just because it's really good for adding like uh, transients at the beginning of a sound, especially for like impacts, shots, stuff like that. The other one that's really great, and this one I use more to add transients to like specific frequencies. So for example, let's say I wanted the bass frequencies or the lower frequencies here to have a bit more punch. I can just add a little band here, put it where I want, and then add some attack, and then let's have a listen. Right? It just adds that body to the sound. It's just so much better. So I can do the same thing with this band. Let's say I want to add attack. Maybe I want to reduce the sustain for this band. Let's have a listen. Right? And what's great is I can also like choose where the cutoffs are so that I can I can kind of shape the sound to how I want it to be. So I really like this plugin for that. It's just to, to shape the frequencies the way I want. And if I want certain frequencies to be snappier than others, this is a great tool to do that. So these are kind of my two go-to like transient shapers. All right, let's go to our next enhancer plugin. And this one is, you can do some really crazy stuff with it. And it's the newest one here on my list. And it's uh, Supermodal by Polyverse. And what this can do is a lot of crazy stuff. And I'm not going to go into all the modulation and crazy sounds that you can get out of this one. But what I, want, I do want to show is how you can add some like tones to your sound or some like ring to your sound. So uh, let's, uh, I'm just going to turn it off here. Let's have a listen to the sample here. 
and then uh, we'll add supermodal. So this is me hitting, uh, I think it was, uh, I was hitting my garbage bin, like metal garbage bin with a hammer or something like that. So that's the sound I was getting. All right, so for this plugin, I don't know exactly all the details of how it works or what it's doing, but basically it's taking a physical modeling filter and applying it to the sound. So you can take the physical modeling of, let's say, a vibraphone or a bell or a piano, or, and there's also like metal, wood, and, and different things. And it's taking basically the filter of what the those sounds make, and then you can apply that to any sound source. Uh, that's kind of a quick way of explaining it, if, if, if you could. Uh, but let's actually have a listen to what it does. So I'm just going to turn it on here, and let's see what we can do. I'm going to put it on, let's put it on, uh, yeah, let's start here on just a square. Okay, and let's have a listen what it can do here. Right, so that's a square wave. Let's try something else. Right, you can make bell sounds. And then what's cool is that then you can kind of blend them uh, with the original sound. So. Right, so this is how I like to use it. Of course, you can go really deep in this and create a lot of crazy stuff, especially with the modulation section down here. Uh, but I, I like to use it as a subtle effect to add certain tones or tonality to a sound or a ring uh, to a sound, especially like the bell here. I, I really like to add this one to sound. Then of course you can choose like the frequency of the, of the bell ring here. Right, but you get the idea. If you use this subtly, it can make a, a, a nice difference to your sound. Like it can be everything from, so this is the original here. It's the difference between that and this. It just sounds a bit more metallic, a bit more like it's ringing out. So if, if you ever have like some sort of metallic sound or sound that's like really bland, but you want it to be ringing a bit more, this is like a plugin that you can use and add to add those subtle effects on. All right, let's move on to our last Enhancer plugin, and this one's huge uh, simply because I, I've seen a lot of uh, beginner sound designers, um, they're like demo reels or just their work, and one of the biggest things I find that is missing is the detail, especially the detail in localizing a sound. Uh, so of course, when you're doing like game audio and stuff like that, like usually that's all done within the game engine, but when you're doing your demo reel, you still have to place your sounds in the stereo field. And I found that the best way and the easiest way to do that is with a plugin like Recenter here. And what this does is basically, yes, you can put a sound you know, to the left or to the right, but you also have stuff like controls like the width of the sound, like how wide it is. The other thing that's really great about it is that for your sound source, so whatever's going through the plugin here, if the stereo, if it's like moving in the stereo field, it'll keep it in the center at all times. And that's really handy, especially for like, if you're doing, uh, if you're recording something that's not perfectly well recorded, or if you're just even whatever you have designed in your uh, session, if it's not perfectly well centered, this will center it for you. So it's super useful for that. All right. And then of course it has other stuff like a mono filter, which is really great and handy. So, uh, yeah, let's just take this off. Let's have a listen to the sound here I have, and let's see how we can use it. So this is a gunshot. Right, so with that, I can take this out here. All right, so that's with it on. And now let's just move it over to the right here. So that's cool. Now I hear it on the right, but I still hear some sounds coming out of the left channel, and that's because it's still really wet. So let's just narrow it in a little bit. And then it's just really focused on the right channel. So it's super easy now to just put it wherever I want in the stereo field. And also, of course, you can do a mono filter just to mono out every frequencies below 100, which is a good common practice. And 
And of course, you can then go into like these crazy effects zone here if you go past the right or the left, right? And of course, if you want to make the sound even wider, so this is the uh, regular, the, the original sound here. Let's say we want to make it super wide. Right, you can do that. So it's just great to have all this control all in one plugin. And again, it's kind of a utility tool that's kind of, there's nothing fun or exciting about it, but it's super, super useful. And I find myself using it a lot in my work just because of how powerful it is and just how much detail and precision you can add to your sound. All right, I hope you found that those plugins useful and valuable and perhaps you'll consider picking some of them up. Um, I'm actually curious to know if there are any that I might have missed. Are there any like enhanced plugins that you use just to make your sounds a little bit punchier or just to pop a little bit and bring it closer to the player or whatever it might be, I don't know. So why don't you let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested to know what people use uh, for when they're designing sound effects. And if you want to see another video just about plugins, I have a, uh, a list of free plugins that I use in my work. So I'll put it the, in the cards above, just free plugins that you can use for sound design. All right, so I think that's it for now. If you have any comments, questions, leave them down below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.